Well, hello there, health coaches. I thought today you would probably be interested in what's going on inside other coaches' real life practices, right? We know, only know what's happening in our own house, maybe at your own kitchen table, doing the work at your desk in your office, but what's going on with all those other health coaches out there? And what's working for them? I think it's always really interesting to see what other coaches are doing and just peek into their world a little bit. So I want to say hello to Antoinette and Debbie and Heather and Antonia that are here live with us. And if anybody else is joining in, please say hello and ask questions as we go along. We're going to talk about a lot of different topics today. So it might make your brain go, oh, I want to hear more about that. Feel free to ask. Either I'll answer you right here on the spot or I'll tuck that idea away for a future episode if it's like a bigger topic that I think warrants a larger um, conversation. So when we talk about what other coaches are doing, the only caveat here is we do not want to play the compare and despair game, of course. So today I've chosen to highlight five real coaches who are taking action. They're taking steps forward, just like last week's podcast episode was all about. And they're succeeding in these small everyday ways that over time add up to big change. Does that sound familiar? That's how change works, right? In business building, as with health, there really are no overnight successes. Whenever you see somebody online and they're like, I'm a billionaire and I run my own business and look at me, uh-uh. It's been small, consistent effort over time that got them there or they're lying. Those are the only two options. Now, how do I know what's going on with the health coaches in our community? I mean, obviously I see the questions and the comments that you guys are posting inside our Facebook group all week long, but I get a really, really good view of the coaches in our fast track program. So that's who I'm talking about today, because I do have the privilege of seeing their businesses, of meeting with them every week, hearing about their struggles and seeing their successes. Here's what you need to know. Everything they're doing, you can be doing. There's no magic. There's nothing we're talking about today that isn't within your reach. In fact, you can get our free blueprint and see exactly what these coaches are doing to add more clients to their practice. If you go to healthcoachpower.com slash blueprint, and I'm going to drop that URL right over here into the Facebook group for you guys. And let's get into it. So first we have Madeline, and I don't know, Madeline, if you're here, you're watching later, or listening to this via podcast, but thank you for letting me highlight you. Surprise. I just thought Madeline made a really great story to talk about. Madeline is busy right now running her first webinar. So question, have you guys held a webinar yet? If you're here live, just say yes or no in the chat. Have you ever held a webinar? We get lots and lots of questions about what's the difference between a workshop and a webinar. The, the words can mean different things. Basically, a, a workshop can be held in person or a workshop can be held online. And if it's held online, you can call it a webinar. You could call it an online workshop too, same, same, right? But a webinar is clearly an online event. Now, workshops are sometimes paid events, you could get paid, you know, several hundred dollars, whatever to show up and do a workshop somewhere, or they can be free. They can be something that you would do as a list builder. And again, you might do that in person or you might do that online. Okay. Antonia says, no, she's never held a webinar before. Debbie says, yikes, thanks for that hot tip. I am comparing and despairing. Another IIN grad whose uber successful business is Sakura Life. How can I ever? Yes, I was thinking about that when I put together today's episode, because typically we hear about the standout success stories. I know exactly who you're talking about with Sakura Life. And there's always going to be these like, wow, success stories that just feel like, how could I ever? Today, we're talking about things that you're going to go, yes, yes, I could ever, I could absolutely ever do that. So first thing, could you hold a webinar? That might feel at first like, I don't know if I could hold a webinar, but I guarantee you've been on Zoom before, right? So I know you can do this. In the case of Madeline's webinar, it is free. It's going to be on Thursday, May 30th. So it's coming up and 
What you can do during a free event like this, if you decide to give this a shot, is you can actually hold the event for free, but then sell a paid program at the end of it. So in this case, Madeline's going to be selling spots in her upcoming five-day jumpstart. So here's what you did. To get people signed up for this webinar in the first place, Madeline built an opt-in page and she used Canva. If you don't know this already, Canva is a really, really easy to use. It's a wonderful tool for building all kinds of graphics. You might know that. Did you know you could build web pages? And it's free, which is so beautiful when we're first starting out. So that's what Madeline used. Her page looks gorgeous. She used our template and then she added her own like really lovely colors and images. But this is what I really love about what Madeline is doing, because if you have ever held an event like this, or if you're even thinking about, could I hold an event like this? You know that getting people there, like getting people signed up is half the battle, or it might even be like 75% of the battle. So what Madeline is doing is she's partnering with a friend of hers that teaches bar classes. And partnering up is something that we talk about a lot inside Fast Track because it is, in my opinion, and this I think is actually not an opinion, I think this is fact. I'm going to say it is fact <laughs> that partnering up is the quickest way to exponentially grow your list and grow your, your reach in general. So you might think like, who do I know? Not another health coach, but who do I know who does something complimentary? Is it a yoga teacher? Is it a massage therapist? Do you know somebody who teaches whatever or does Reiki or, you know what I mean? Like another holistic practitioner, another wellness practitioner. So in this case, the friend is going to promote Madeline's free webinar to her audience. And in exchange, Madeline's going to promote her friend's bar classes to hers, right? And it's going to be a nice win-win for both of them. So I love this. I love how it's all taking shape. It's coming together a couple more days and this webinar will be happening live. What are our key takeaways for Madeline's story? What has this brought to mind to you so far? Oh, I could do that. Oh, I know someone, right? Tell me in the chat. And I'm going to say that I think the very first thing that I want you to take away is it is very possible to run a webinar. It's not something that only like really tech savvy people can do or very experienced coaches do. We all use Zoom all the time, thanks to the pandemic. Right? Even my mom knows how to use Zoom. And that means any of us can host an online event like this, including you. Second. Why not try Canva's website builder? It's been a favorite among our fast trackers this year. So that's an interesting new tool for you. Go check it out. And third, cultivate relationships with people who can help promote your upcoming events, your free stuff, your blog posts, whatever it is, to their audience. And you can do something in exchange for them. There's no cost here. It's not like running Facebook ads or something to get in front of a new audience. It's just this beautiful cross-pollination that can happen. So let's hear a round of applause for Madeline. And Madeline, good luck on the 30th. We can't wait to hear how it goes. All right, next up, I am moving on to Ellen. Hi, Ellen, who, by the way, I had the pleasure of meeting Ellen in person last weekend. I don't know if you guys remember this, but a couple of months ago here on the show, I announced that I was hosting an event for our community in New York City, and that happened last Saturday. And Ellen came out along with a bunch of others. It was just lovely to meet everybody in person. I'm really hoping we can do more of these in the future. I do not have anything planned yet at the moment, but you'll be the first to know when I do. Well, Ellen's big thing so far inside Fast Track has been starting and communicating with her email list and her social media audiences. So this is like by now the sixth, seventh week that she sent an email to her list, posted to social, and it just keeps getting easier and easier. Now we do provide templates for these emails and social posts with Fast Track, but this week Ellen actually had to write her own from scratch. And I don't know about you, but I know staring at a blank page can be kind of intimidating right? Like, do you ever get writer's block when you're just staring and the cursor is blinking and you're like, what am I going to write? Well, 
Ellen did it. She got out of her own way. She wrote the thing. She got her email out. She posted to Facebook and she said that this has been her favorite thing, like actually publishing her content and getting it out into the world. Like it feels really good. It feels like you really accomplished something. I, I, I can totally understand that feeling. And this email, the one that she wrote all by herself, she said it was the best so far in engagement and reach. And she's got this college friend. She said she hasn't seen this person in 45 years. Can you believe that? And he actually saw her social post this week. He's the chief of science officer at two different supplement companies. And he commented and showed his support of what she's doing. And she was like, oh, you know, like the validation that comes with that. She said that she never would have reconnected with him in any other way. So her advice, I'm just going to pass along her advice to all of you. First of all, if you're here live, do you dread emailing your list? Yes or no? Are you like, oh, what am I going to post on social media? What am I going to write about? Maybe you don't even have a list, right? Are you someone like this? Just say yes in the comments if that's you. You know, it's just like our clients or clients that you might be working with who dread cooking, you know, or they hate the idea of going out for a run. It just is like, oh, to them. So is that you? Do you dread writing those emails? Do you avoid it like the plague? Ellen knows the feeling. And this is her advice, just like we would give to our clients. It can really help to reframe the experience. So it's not like, oh, you have to send an email. It's you get to send an email. You get to do this thing. Look at you. You get to communicate with people that you might not otherwise speak with. You get to share about health and wellness. You get to market yourself. Aren't you so lucky, right? That's amazing that you have this opportunity in this world to spread your message about health and well-being. So I hope you all will take that advice and you can share that with your clients too. Anytime that they're like, oh, I don't want to do this thing. I hate this. I have to just try flipping that into you get to. And what does that feel like? You get to go for a run because you have two working legs. I mean, amazing, right? Anyway, Ellen, hats off to you. I know it's not easy to get the ball rolling, but you've come really far in a short period of time. And these are the kinds of habits that I was talking about in the beginning of this episode. Small, consistent actions over time. In this way, you are creating community, you're creating a following, you're creating people who get used to seeing you in their inbox, right? And over time, this creates paying clients. All right, applause for Ellen, please. And we're gonna move on to Diane. We're talking about pricing when it comes to Diane's story. So I'm just curious for those of you that are here live and I can see that a bunch of you are now, do you feel like you're charging enough, too little, not sure? Like, how do you feel about your pricing? I know it's a really touchy sh subject, especially for new coaches. The fact of the matter is if you're only charging like $200, $300, $400 for a private coaching package, it's gonna be really, really hard to even just cover your costs. You know, there's not enough hours in the day and you probably don't have enough clients for that amount of money to add up. So when someone's signing on for a private coaching package, I want to really encourage you to, if not today, maybe over the next couple of weeks or months, raise your prices. So they are at least around the thousand dollar mark. And I know that's something I've shared before here on the show. Well, Diane, who has a good amount of experience, she is not brand new out of school. She felt like her prices were too low, but of course it's so intimidating to raise them. <gasps> I know, because I've done it so many times. I remember when I doubled my private health coaching fees for my clients and I was shocked when they still signed up. And you know what? Diane found the same thing to be true. She raised her prices to $1,200 for her one-on-one -on -one coaching package. And she just signed her first client at that new price who paid in full over the phone, like here, take my credit card. That's exactly what you want it to be like. You know, you know, they're just like, yes, of course I want to sign up. You know, can I give you my Amex? Yes. Thank you. And she found it easy. And it must've been such a like moment of like relief that someone was willing to pay that $1,200. And I assure you, 
There are many, many people out there like that. Diane said it was a breeze using the sales recipe that I teach inside Fast Track. You know, it is helpful when you know what to say during that conversation, your discovery call. Debbie's doing a little clapping hand emoji over here in the comments. I know, right? Like I hate seeing these opportunities for, I'm going to say opportunities in quote opportunities for health coaches online. These like various jobs that want you to have a master's degree and this certification and this accreditation. And then they're going to pay you like $7 an hour to, you know, to work for them. Like that's not the kind of money anybody can afford to be making. If you haven't already think about raising your prices. And if you think you can't do it, just remember Diane. Okay. How about Macaulay? Macaulay has been working hard, figuring out how to use ConvertKit. Do you know what ConvertKit is? There are lots of different email services out there. So if you want to be able to email your mailing list, from a professional email service provider. And you know, it's gonna have an unsubscribe link at the bottom. It's gonna be coming from your business, not coming from your you know, personal one-to-one -one email address. Um, then you need a service like ConvertKit and ConvertKit is our top pick for health coaches because they have a really great free plan that you can get started with. And they just have a lot of great features and great support. So if you're like, I've been thinking about starting a mailing list, I'm not really sure. You can go to healthcoachpower.com slash convert kit. And I'll put that link right here in our chat. So you can click on it and get started with a free plan. It's super easy to get going with it. Anyway, so you get set up great. Well, now Macaulay, who also has a webinar coming up, she had to figure out how to use ConvertKit to register people for the webinar, how to, you know, once they type in their name and their email address, there's a little success message that shows up that says like, yes, you're confirmed, you're all signed up. Then she had to send a confirmation email and schedule out the reminders. Cause you know, when you sign up for a webinar, you usually get a reminder like the day before, a few minutes before with the Zoom link. So she had to figure all of that out. And I mean, we're giving tutorials and everybody's working on this together inside Fast Track. But when you have a brand new piece of technology in front of you, it can be daunting. Yes. Do we feel that? Is anybody else using ConvertKit? If you're here live with me, tell me if you're a ConvertKit user already. Because I do, I love their support, but it is such an amazing feeling to be like, oh, I did it, it works. I set up the page, I tested it. The confirmation email comes through, oh, like butter. <laughs> and that's where Macaulay is at now. But it, it took her some time and it's going to take you some time anytime that you have like a new tool, a new piece of technology. So hats off to Macaulay. And I just want to say, you don't need an awful lot of technology to do anything that you need to do as a health coach, but you do need an email service provider. That's like one thing that you'll definitely want to learn and learn well, because you'll be using it. Like Ellen's been using it to email her list every week and Macaulay's using it to register people. And you know, you're going to use it all the time. Um, when Madeline holds her webinar, she's going to be using her email service to then send emails and say, remember, you can sign up for my jumpstart. So I use my email service provider almost every day. I don't think a day goes by in my business that I'm not inside that platform. Julie's using it. Good. She says, yes, it's wonderful, but it's a huge learning curve. Any new tool is going to be. So I don't want you to get stuck on like the extraneous, like accessory tools that you don't really need. If you had only one, it would be an email service provider. That's a great place to invest your time learning. So I'm so glad that Macaulay was able to do that. And then this is great because I, I don't want to just talk about techie things. I want to remind you that a lot of what you're doing in your health coaching business can be done the old school way. <laughs> it can be done as if the internet doesn't exist because even if you wanted to not hold a webinar online, you could hold a workshop in person. And if you wanted to register people with a clipboard and a piece of paper and like a little pencil hanging off a string, you could. That's how people used to do business. And you can still do it that way. Like sometimes we get so hung up with, oh my God, you know, this tool, oh my God, I don't know how to use, uh, make a, this graphic or make this kind of page. Just think, how would I do it if, if it was pre-internet? 
And I think most of us in this community were alive, yes, before the internet. Oh my goodness, I know some people have, are, were not, but most of us remember what life was like before the internet. So hats off to Lindsay. She's our fifth coach for today, taking action. Lindsay's kicking it old school. She went to Staples. She printed flyers to promote her free event that's coming up. And then she went around town and she hung them up. Can you do this? Do you know where there's a Staples or something like that in your community? If not, you know, you can order it online. You get the flyers. You don't have to get a zillion of them. Get like 10. It's not going to cost that much money. She said she went to a local park, an organic market, the rec center, and the gym. And I would add to that, that yes, any natural food store, or even just a conventional grocery store, they often have a bulletin board where you can hang things. Yoga studios often have a bulletin board where you can ask to hang a flyer like this. They're going to be psyched because it's aligned with health and wellness. It makes sense. It's not like you're selling, I don't know, tire rotations and oil changes. You're selling something as a health coach that makes a lot of sense inside a yoga studio, inside a natural food store. So you can hang these things on their bulletin board. And you know what's crazy is I've seen this really work, especially these days with the QR code, people can go by and just boop, click, or, you know, you can put an email address or a phone number or something on your flyer. But in any case, this is a step that Lindsay could take. She said it felt good to get it out there. Yes, it feels good to just take any step forward. So let's not get hung up on all the fancy schmancy, this tool and that tool, and let me do it the most complicated way possible. You know, maybe just kick it back old school and say, what's the easiest way for me to do this? You could print out little flyers and, you know, put them in your neighbor's mailbox, <laughs> just like people do used to do years ago. It works. In fact, sometimes it works even better because people aren't expecting it as much. They're expecting you to post stuff to your Facebook feed, but to get something in their mailbox, ooh, you know? So remember, today in this episode is not about comparing yourselves to others, especially others who are doing wild, huge things that are about a hundred steps beyond where you are today and thinking, ugh, I can't do that. They're ahead of me. This isn't about beating yourself up. I promise just a few short weeks ago, the five coaches that I shared about today, they weren't doing any of these things. So if you're not doing any of these things, you're not alone. <laughs> That's really, really common. Just imagine where you could be in a couple weeks if you simply take that next step. And hopefully today's episode gave you a lot of ideas for what that next step could be. And if you would like to see our free blueprint on how you can add more clients to your practice in 90 days, go to healthcoachpower.com slash blueprint. And I'll see you next time, you guys. Have a great week.